Today, a video review of the Handy Heater. It's a personal space heater as seen on TV. And by the way, if you've just come from watching a review elsewhere of the Handy Heater, be sure to watch to the end because there's some downright stupid reviews out there from non-techie people and from reviewers that should know better but don't have the product knowledge to inform you properly. I've seen a misunderstanding of how the product works right through to advocating dangerous use of the product. Stick with me and I'll explain the full benefits of the Handy Heater when used safely and how to save around half on the purchase price. For more tech reviews, remember to hit subscribe and catch some of the best new products here first. Let's deal with the biggest misunderstanding of the handy heater. Lots of people are mistaking this temperature control for thermostatic room control. This is just a simple up or down to give you a point of reference to the power setting chosen. So I'm seeing for example people set this to say 80 and then expecting that the room will heat to 80 Fahrenheit. It can't. This has no idea what the temperature is in say the center of the room. The only way it could possibly know the room temperature would be if it had a separate unit that's a separate thermostat on an adjacent wall sending it information. I'm sure it has a thermostat. In fact it says it does on the box but that's just to stop it overheating and to turn it up or down. It's not specifically a room thermostat. In short the handy heater knows how hot the handy heater is. The handy heater doesn't know how hot the other side of the room or the center of the room is and has no way of automatically regulating that. So this is just for play. And if you understand what the product does, you won't be disappointed and can make a better informed decision to buy or not buy. The clue is on the box. It's a personal space heater, meaning it gives you directional heat if you're immediately nearby where it's located. And that's it. It's not meant to do any more or any less. If you've seen people doing before and after room temperature tests online, well, that's almost as misguided as throwing a bedtime hot water bottle into a room and checking back in half hour expecting the room temperature to be greater. Quickly, another incorrect observation online is that this shuts down periodically where it's assumed to be faulty. To clarify, when that happens, it's not broken. That's just the internal thermostat making sure the unit doesn't overheat. Remember, it doesn't care what temperature you are or what temperature the room is, the handy heater's main concern is to look after its own ass. What we will test here is the noise levels. It has two fan speed settings. Underneath we see the fan. You have to ensure the handy heater is at least 20 centimeters raised from the ground. I have an ambient background noise at around 53 decibels. That's normal for a quiet room with nothing going on. Not zero as you might expect. I describe what I hear as being around half the volume of a hairdryer on its very lowest setting and almost silent on the handy heater's lowest fan speed. On a low fan speed setting we get around 57. On the higher fan speed around 65. I've seen this tested online in a bathroom, which is really dangerous. I know some countries are more relaxed on using electricals in a bathroom than what we are in the UK. But come on, be sensible. This has no IP rating and it will never be friends with water or steam. Any plug-in electric heater in a bathroom with the wrong set of conditions and events could mean that you get killed until you're dead. This would be bad. I found the one I purchased here to be a handy companion in the garage next to where I was working. You might find it a comfort to use in your office or bedroom. Be sure to follow all of the safety instructions that advise where and how to use it, allowing space around and above the unit. Also, you don't want to use it where somebody might slide a chair or soft furniture up against it, so you've got to be mindful of what others might do as well. Obviously, don't use it in a home where you have small children that could come in contact with it. And don't let the fact that it has a shut-off timer encourage you to leave the unit unattended is my advice. Here's an observation. You can't press the socket's power switch when the handy heater is plugged in. You have to do this first. The power button remains cool to the touch even after the unit has ran for a while. Overall, I like the handy heater. And so did my cat. I like that it has no lead to trip over and I can see why it's so popular. The handy heater doesn't feel flimsy at all. It makes you feel it's well built. The grill is interesting. It has a matte black fuzzy felt feel to it. I wonder what material that actually is. It chucks out heat instantly. You don't have to wait for it to warm up to feel the benefit and it's small enough to travel with. The Handy Heater is sold worldwide for different markets and is available for UK, US or EU compatibility. So make sure you get the right one. If you picked one up in a store, 
put it back on the shelf. A big retailer may charge you twice as much as you could pay just because they've printed their name on the box. These units, to my best knowledge, all come from China, costing peanuts to make. So you don't have to pay $40 or £40 in the UK. Instead, check out the links in the description I found to cheaper retailers on a trusted marketplace. Just to be transparent, they are affiliate links. That means if you buy an item, the channel can get a small payment at no extra cost to you that helps support making new content and product tests. If you have a handy heat out of your own, tell us what you think in the comments. If the video was useful, please like or share. I'll have an interesting product to test again next time. So hit that subscribe button. And if you subscribe already, thanks. See ya.